what tips would I give to a pro or to a beginner to become a better driver? And that's why I wanted to take a different approach in this. Say what? So yeah, that guy is the reason that I'm making this video. So. Hello everyone and welcome to Sebastian Lab Rally Evolution. So that guy actually posted a very controversial comment which says that I will only add that air salary in terms of the appearance of the routes and driving the car is more similar to realism and it is a piety that the game has not come to the next part. Still, air salary eats the underdeveloped WC8 for breakfast or the overrated Dare Rally 2.0. So I was like, that's a big, 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 big thing to say pretty much. So immediately, when you actually jump into the game, there's a huge amount of cars, there's a huge selection of cars that you can choose from. And I was very surprised, I was like, why did I not notice this game back when it actually launched? I was like playing their rally and WC games and I never noticed this game. And as you can see, I'm showing you off every single car that it has. It has plenty of cars that their rally 2.0 hasn't got. We're not going to compare it to WRC8, it barely has any historic cars, it pretty much focuses on modern cars, but this this game has some cars that I was actually looking to drive on a rally game that I couldn't find, like the Saxo, the Xara, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, but it had plenty of cars that their rally had and plenty of cars that it didn't have. Of course it was missing some cars from Dare Alley 2.0, but I'm not going to compare everything. I'm just focusing on this game right now. And as you can see, it's got plenty of historic cars, plenty of modern cars. Uh, considering the game came out on uh, 2016, it hasn't got any cars uh, after 2016. So that's do not compare like cars that came out of after 2016 and are on future games. So that's unfair pretty much. It's got groupie cars, it's got modern cars, it's got, it's got kit cars, it's got pretty much everything you're looking for and I was very very happy with the content that I saw. Of course there's some DLC here and there, there is uh, the Rallycross Park which gives you like um, two trucks of Rallycross and um, extra Rallycross cars, actually the only Rallycross cars which are pretty much historic. One big big thing that this game has is you can drive every single car on whatever category you want. You can drive like a WRC car on a Pikes Peak stage or a rally car on a rallycross stage or, or, or pretty much a rallycross car on a rally stage. So that's amazing to see. I wish that was a thing on Dare Rally 2.0 or Dare Rally 1 but it wasn't unfortunately. This game had that. This game had that and as you can see these are the DLC cars. There's also a Pikes Peak DLC which has uh, the gravel stages from the Pikes Peak and two extra cars if I'm not mistaken. So plenty of content and with a very good price. Like I don't I'm not gonna talk about the policy behind the Dare Alley 2.0 DLCs because that was a bad bad move from Codemasters but I'm probably gonna talk about that on a future video. I'm gonna be talking about this game it's not expensive and it's got a lot of content. Uh, this is pretty much, you can you can still watch. I'm still showing you the cars. It's got the Celica. Why why are we not having a Celica on the w, on the Dare Rally 2.0 games? Like, I can't understand that. I do not understand that. It, it's got plenty of content for free. I actually bought the game on a very low price. It had um, uh, Steam, um, uh, something like it was... Uh, Winter? Steam Winter, something like that. So it had a discount on it. And these are all the stages you can see. It's got plenty of rallies like Monte Carlo, Sweden, Mexico, Italy, Finland, France. And each of those rallies has, uh, I think, a combination of uh, eight stages. Yeah, it's eight stages. Uh, and what can I say about those stages? Um, I'm so impressed by the stage design. I'm going to say it. The stage design on this game is even better than the stage design on WRC8. I can't write... Like, this game has such amazing stages. I wasn't getting bored. Even the Rallycross tracks were amazing. 
Plus there are no DLC on the rally cars apart from a Ford Focus RS DLC and a Hyundai DLC. All the stages are free, are coming with the game. Uh, there's one DLC for the Rallycross which gives you the cars plus this hell circuit which pretty much is uh, a common circuit on the Dare Rally franchise and a pretty nice circuit but in comparison to the, the, the other trucks that are coming with uh, the main game on Rallycross I feel like it is a weak one the other stages are just beautiful uh, on Rallycross and there you can see the Pikes Peak it's got the complete um, pretty much stage let me call it and then there's a short one a medium one and a long one this is a tarmac it comes with the main game and then we have the gravel ones same sort of thing uh, complete long short medium and do I think this is worth it 100% worth it the gravel bike speak was just a hell of a great experience I, I cannot explain how good the car felt there and of course it comes together with the DLC of the Pikes Peak cars, which are absolutely worthy, uh, because on that in that DLC there's a Suzuki which has a 995 horsepower, something like that. So it's got the fastest car in the game. So you need to get that. Here, as you can see, is the Sebastian Leb events. It's something similar to Derali 2.0, the Colin McRae events that we're probably getting around uh, 24th of March and I'm gonna be making videos on that probably with another YouTuber but that's a thing for another video so expect me to make more Derali 2.0 content because some of you have been saying oh you hate Derali 2.0 you only like uh, WC8 but uh, talking about this game, it's got a similar sort of mode with scenarios with Sebastian Lab, with clips from Lab trying to beat the times, and it's got pretty much you go through his career and he steps into becoming a WRC or a rally legend uh, or a driving legend, let's just say. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Tell me down in the comments below actually if you want me to post videos of that because I really, really want to try it out. I will try it out. But if you want me to put some content out of it, then I'm really up for it because I absolutely love this game. Then we have the career mode, very in depth, very like um, you have to go from this to this, from the historic cars to the modern cars. I like it. Um, similar idea to every single like the Dirt Rally career mode, but I feel like this is a little bit more organized and pushing you a little bit more when it comes down to the line to the Sebastian Lab challenges pretty much which are very tough and you have to be like at the top of your level I'm not saying Dare Rally 2.0 isn't hard don't get me wrong it's probably much harder than this game but uh, the career mode if it's at the same level as Dare Rally but the Sebastian Lab like um, events not events the Sebastian Lab career mode is just very good. I really like the scenario mode. So I want to try this out. Tell me down in the comments below if you want me to post any videos on it. But here you can see the first footage. We're driving a car that isn't actually on um, Dare Rally Games. It's the Fiat Arboth and uh, an Arboth Punto. I really like this car. I wish it was part of the Dare Rally 2.0 game. Like I want Dare Rally 2.0 to have more content in it. I feel like. Coming this game to an end uh, with Dare Rally 2.0, it should have had more content considering the money I paid on DLC and all that. But either way, uh, I'm going to be talking about Dare Rally 2.0 in another video. How does the gameplay feel? As you can see, the stages are very nice. Tarmac feels better than w WC8 and better than Dare Rally 2.0. I'm so about this. I'm 100% telling you that you're probably going to be enjoying the tarmac driving more than you did on any of the other games. Why though? Um, I don't know. It's also challenging as you can see. I just completely locked up my front my front tires and made that mistake. So expect mistakes to happen. This game is not easy at all. It took me quite a while to get into grips with the cars and that's purely because every single car feels different and it's beautiful to see that on the rally game it's pretty much the core of a rally game you might not have the best physics but every single car needs to feel different every single you have to adapt yourself 
on every single car like you're driving a new car and that's what makes this game special for me because I've drove like uh, front wheel drive cars, four wheel drive cars and rear wheel drive cars and they all felt differently not only in that, not on the how many wheels they're using but it's also down to the category, down to the speed like you know uh, the kit car felt differently the groupie car felt differently and that's something that their rally 2.0 has achieved nicely I feel like they've done a very decent job into making that that's one of the things this game has it's very annoying the cars can flip very easily not on rallying that much but on the rally cross which I'm gonna show you later that's a whole different thing you know um, yeah, the cars flip very easily on Rallycross, but now I'm driving my all-time favorite car, the Ford Focus RS. I wish they had that livery on their Rally 2.0, but what can I say? We still have a black livery on a Ford Focus RS. Like these guys, Cod Masters, what are you doing? Give us this livery. I would be more keen to drive that car, but either way, um, gravel physics. Not gonna say they are better than their Rally 2.0. I feel like the gravel physics are a little bit worse. Their Rally 2.0 has very good gravel physics and WCA too. But once again, back to Tarmac with the kit car, the Citroën Saxo kit car. I was very impressed with the handling of this car. The front wheel drive car had a had a completely different feeling when you bro when you broke uh, when you would break the car. Or you would push the hand, you would pull the handbrake. It would feel so much different, and especially down on the brakes, you shouldn't brake too much because then the front wheels will spin, and that will pretty much unstabilize the car. So I was very impressed driving this Citroen Saxo. Um, it's a pity that we don't have that car on their Rally 2.0. But for example, you don't have a Seat Ibiza on this game, which is another amazing car on the rally 2.0 probably one of my favorites um, so yeah the Citroen Saxo feels absolutely insane one thing that I was pretty disappointed with were the engine sounds um, they were weak and they were not really different from car to car like I wasn't getting that feeling that immersion that I was getting from the rally 2.0 but you can see the handling is very weird but very enjoyable at the same time you know a game doesn't have to be 100% realistic to be enjoyable I feel like this game is has got something very special in it and now we're driving on pretty much icy tarmac uh, nothing like the Dare Rally 2.0 icy tarmac uh, I feel like the icy tarmac of Dare Rally is very tough this one was bearable so I could actually go through the stage but yeah, I will let you listen to the engine sounds in a bit. Um, next up, I was trying Sweden. So that was a purely snow, uh, snowy rally. And I was also trying, this is a Group B car, the Renault Clio or the Renault R5. I feel like that's the Renault R5. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, sorry, but I'm not really familiar with the names of the cars, of these old cars. Huge mistake there, we're gonna forget about that, but how did the Group B cars felt? Very tough to drive. The back end would go like crazy all of the time, so that's why I was a little bit over the place throughout this stage. Uh, very fast on the acceleration, are they better than the Dare Rally 2.0 ones? Uh, highly doubted, because the Group B cars on Dare Rally 2.0 feel amazing, but for... For, for that game, I was very happy driving those cars. I was getting a lot of feedback from the car. One thing that I loved about this game it was the feedback. I would get a lot of feedback from the from the force feedback, from the way the car handled. So I would adopt my driving style more and more as the time went on and as I was driving the car. But let you listen now to the engine sounds and the reason I'm disappointed in them. Right six plus and left five. Right six and left five tightens into right four plus fifty. So that's pretty much why I'm disappointing. Uh, the engine sounds are weak, they're not very loud, and they're also not like having any difference. Like I was expecting the groupie car to scare me as some as some going full out throttle. 
on like second gear or third gear that didn't happen and I'm very disappointed to say that this game actually misses out on sound it's got everything to be a fantastic rally game but sound is so important in a rally game you know when people say their rally 2.0 has the better sound on both WC8 and this game like their rally 2.0 completely dominates the engine sounds it makes you feel like when I wear my headphones and I'm on the rally 2.0 I feel like I'm driving a real rally car due to the sounds and it's just a whole different experience but it's this game has got something different I feel like first of all tarmac physics are much better and the whole feeling of driving the car is beautiful I really enjoy driving those cars and now we're driving a modern WC car which is a Mini Cooper and we don't have I feel like we don't have a modern Mini Cooper on their rally 2.0 as you can see, went over the bump there, completely lost the back end, but I was able to save the car. So I'm very, very excited to drive those cars, even though they don't really sound different. You can see the Mini Cooper doesn't really sound any different, but it still drives amazingly. I was so impressed to see that there was such a gem back in 2016, and I never tried it out. You know, the graphics might seem very old dated I'm not gonna lie I wasn't impressed by the graphics but I'm one of those people that don't really care about the graphics on a racing game if the racing game feels good on its court the physics like uh, the driving of the car is enjoyable it's got plenty of cars to drive from and every single car feels different like on this game then I'm not one of those persons that's gonna be like oh this game has terrible graphics I'm not gonna play it you know I saw some people saying uh, WC8 has terrible uh, graphics uh, the stages are not very well designed not in terms of the itinerary but in terms of the trees in terms of the grass yeah their rally 2.0 has the better graphics obviously but I'm one of those people that don't really pay attention to graphics and I'm more focused on the core of the game and how how much I'm enjoying it and I'm gonna be honest I prefer a good game than a good graphical game but now on to Rallycross what I'm showing you off on those first clips my first impression for Rallycross the AI is crazy this is hard level AI and I've been pretty much dealt with they bullied me pretty much they would always come onto me and now I'm gonna show you how easily the cars flip this is the reason that you might actually find this very 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 annoying when the cars flip but I had uh, one clean race on around this it's a very uh, familiar track this one we've seen it on um, the rally 2.0 quite a lot of times and I'm driving as you can see these are the rally Chris cars the historic rally Chris cars that are DLCs there are no more than rally Chris cars that's a bit of a mistake by the game I wish there were more than rally Chris cars but these ones feel amazing you know they might be historic but they feel very good and driving uh, on this game on rally Chris is better I feel like the handling of the cars on this one is better and yeah it's a bit of a controversial thing to say because I really enjoy the rallycross uh, mode on their rally 2.0 because it's got so many cars I enjoy driving like the Ford Fiesta the Renault Megane the Renault Clio the set Ibiza the Audi the yeah some someone is gonna say I'm stupid for saying this uh, that uh, these rallycross modes are better than the other than the their rally 2.0 ones but despite the amount of cars that I can choose from a their rally 2.0 the driving on this one is more enjoyable and please don't take this as a hating on their rally 2.0 I love their rally like I love their rally I still make content on it so I really like the game but please give this game a try and tell me if I'm wrong because I might, I, might, I might be going crazy at the moment but I feel like this game is better on Rallycross on rallying of course there's some things that their rally 2.0 is a master at and there's some things that WC8 is a master at so yeah on Rallycross I feel like this is the game 
that makes the difference and um, as you can see there I bottled it on the last lap and then immediately jump back up the inside and uh, you might think the AI is very easy and I agree with you it was on hard difficulty there's another level called realistic but I was too scared to actually go on and um, try this out but you know we could try it out on the career mode together just tell me down in the comments below if you want to see more videos on that game I especially I enjoy this game I enjoy this game a lot and as you can see another victory and uh, yeah this game actually is very good as you can see and now moving on to the next part which proved to be probably either Rallycross was as enjoyable as this but we go into the part that their rally 2.0 is missing Pikes Peak where is Pikes Peak? where is hill climb on their rally 2.0 it was there on their rally 1 and it was the most amazing feature that this that, that game had to offer their rally 1 hill climb was the thing that I, I would my friends would come to my house and we would play hill climb we would try and beat each other's times but that was pretty much the thing hill climb was amazing with their rally and I'm so glad that this game has it their rally 2.0 hasn't got hill climb and it will never get hill climb and I'm so disappointed that they made the decision not to add it I don't know why but for some weird reason they just didn't but this game has it Cars feel great once again, engine sounds, I'm not gonna uh, talk about, talk more about that because they're still very disappointed. I was expecting this thing to roar, but it didn't. <laughs> it just didn't. It just sounded like a saxo. <laughs> but yeah, handling was very nice. Uh, physics once again on the tarmac were amazing. Uh, this is in the main game. That car was in the main game and that stage was in the main game. So you get that with the main package of the game but uh, this combination now the gravel hill climb plus the Suzuki this Suzuki is the fastest car that you can get on the game 995 horsepower something like that yeah this car feels amazing I'm just gonna let you enjoy this ride for a little bit uh, because I was like had nothing to say So yeah, the Suzuki feels great and if I'm saying that one DLC you have to pay for is probably the Rallycross cars. The Rallycross track, I'm not really impressed with it, I've, I'm using the playing around hell so the other tracks actually were better for me. Uh, but this this DLC, the, high, the Pikes Peak DLC, 100% get it and also get the Rally. DLC which uh, includes I feel like a Hyundai which I haven't sold you on this video and the full focus RS from 07 but overall this game is actually very very good it's got some it's got some downgrades like um, I feel like handbrake isn't very useful in this game and is not implemented rightly uh, I'm not gonna say on their rally 2.0 handbrake is very useful too but it's better obviously than this game. WC8 I feel like has the best handbrake use usage. Um in terms of flipping the cars, that was a bit of a of a bad moment on this game, but overall it's got a lot of content. It's got rally cross, it's got rally, it's got some very exciting um activities with Sebastian Leb, um sort of event, something like that. It's got a pretty normal career mode, and yeah. A huge amount of cars to actually go on and try out so is it better than their rally 2.0 not sure is it better than the WRC 8 not sure is it as enjoyable as both of those games I'm very sure about that it's as enjoyable as the other two games and probably even their rally one but I'm not gonna put that into the comparison but uh, yeah thanks for the idea thank you a lot for commenting that because my money have gone into something very nice that's all I'm gonna say thank you so much for telling me to buy this game and try it out and probably even give me the idea to make this video but yeah that was it for today guys if you enjoyed smash the like button subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you want to see more videos of this game smash the like button and also give me a comment 
that's what makes those videos the comments so yeah until the next video guys i'll catch you later goodbye